honestly think every time I turn on the camera, I feel like I'm always talking about food. I don't know if that's a bad or good thing, but the purpose of this video is to talk about five shortages that we will see in our grocery stores by summer. Now I make a lot of these videos and a lot of times we'll have people say, oh, I see it already. Or I have some naysayers say, oh, there's no shortages. Well, if you don't have a shortage, you're gonna have a price increase. So both of them are pretty bad for you. Price increase or shortages. Whichever one you're seeing is not good for your wallet and also the security of your family. So let's talk about five things that are in shortage when it comes to food. We'll see more shortages as we get close to summer. Now, the great thing about this is every one of these, we're gonna talk about a solution to them. And if you will just listen to what I'm saying, I promise you, this will help you when it comes to these shortages. It won't affect you when it comes to summer. Let's jump into the list. The video starts right now. Hey guys, welcome to the max. Thank you so much for being here today. If you're new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, but let us know what you think about this video. Things that could help other people. The great thing about the comment section, we've become a community and our goal is to grow together. So put some either constructive criticism or making sure that you're putting information that can help others in the comment. Now I want to bring to your attention, we have started a newsletter. Signing up for the newsletter is free. You will get a portion of it at no cost. If you sign up for the second part, you'll get the whole newsletter and we do a lot of those a week and we go more in depth on some of the subject matter that we talk about in the videos. I get very personal in our newsletter, so I've enjoyed writing that so go down to our Substack and check that out we're gonna be putting out about two or three a week of that and it's gonna be very personal and, uh, and some good reads so check that out below now let's jump into the video so we talk shortage all the time but these five things are going to be in shortage even more as we get close to summer and it all deals with how we grow our food or because maybe the weather or the supply chain issues that we're seeing on the west coast and maneuvering eastward the West Coast has been hit probably the hardest either with weather or with a lot of regulation. So let's jump into the list. And, and when we jump into this list, I'm gonna give you some solutions too. So number one, it's gonna be tomatoes. Tomatoes have been a big staple for most families who are growing gardens. My favorite, by the way, is Cherokee Purple. Let me know below, what is your favorite in the comments? Cherokee Purple, by far the best tomato. All your other tomatoes, no good. Let me know what your favorite is, by the way. But tomatoes are in shortage because of the water rainfall and some of, and the fact that it is a pretty heavy feeder when it comes to fertilization. Now here we grow organically and we grow heirloom, but we've learned how to make sure that we're putting something with it to help it grow and also to help bugs stay away from it. Now we've seen in California and a lot of places that are growing tomatoes in mass, you're starting to see the shortage because of the weather and the regulation and some supply chain issues and even not having workers at the farms. Now, what that's going to do is going to cost more for your regular tomatoes. We know that fresh garden vegetables. The crazy thing is when we talk about making, you know, dishes to eat for supper, when we think of tacos or we think of spaghetti or we think of anything like that, all those items need a tomato based product going into sauces or seasonings. So that is a big deal. We're going to see shortages or price increases on simple things such as ketchup, tomato sauce, tomato paste, and then of course the main fruit of tomato. So here's my challenge to you. Look at the options here. These are grow bags. Grow bags are phenomenal when you're growing tomatoes. Not only that, you can even use five gallon buckets. As long as you use a food grade and make some little holes in the bottom, you can grow these. We literally grow tomatoes in the ground, but in the winter and in the fall, all year round, we grow tomatoes in buckets with a stick, a little dirt, and a five gallon bucket or grow bag. I'm telling you, it's a game changer. You can grow your own tomatoes. It's fun to grow. They're better to eat. They're better quality than any you'll buy at the store anyway. But beside that, if you don't want to grow it and you don't have a place to grow, you better start stockpiling some of the tomato-based products. I would challenge you to learn how to can tomatoes. It's pretty easy because they're acidic fruit or vegetable, if you want to call them that. There's an argument with that. But you can learn to can them and learn to do all your own paste, sauce, and even stewed tomatoes for any of your base for all the foods that you're actually eating each and every day. 
For the last two years, we've seen the shortages of lettuce. Lettuce is in shortage also for the same reason as tomatoes. Either the harvesting is not happening, the weather has played into it, or we've seen a lot of regulation on it. The scary thing about lettuce is we've seen a lot of mentions of barcoding lettuce and, and all this very shady stuff when it comes to lettuce. Lettuce is literally the easiest thing to grow. Now I'm gonna tell you how to grow lettuce. You can grow it in little pots. You can put them on the windowsill and grow little heads of lettuce and you just pull off what you need. We literally do that here. We grow it in small little containers. We grow it in small little pots. Also, if you don't have a way to grow like that, I'm gonna blow your mind here. You can get a bag of topsoil. Go to Walmart, Home Depot, any garden co-op store. Buy a high quality topsoil or potting soil mix. I'd look for garden or potting soil more than topsoil. You literally can cut a hole in the top and literally just put a few seeds through there and just scatter them around. Not going deep and they will grow. So you literally can buy a pack of seeds of lettuce for a dollar and then buy a good high quality garden or potting soil and could just cut the top out of it. Make it where it has edges. You can water in that, the water will drain out in this little makeshift garden. You don't believe it, we've actually done it. We've got videos, old, old, old videos in our garden playlist. It's a game changer. So for under $10, you can grow as much lettuce as you want, especially when it gets cooler. It's a great time to grow lettuce. If you don't grow it, you're gonna see shortages and there's no real good way to put up lettuce for the long haul. So you better start growing it or learning to substitute it in your diet. No matter if you're living inside and you have no way to grow it outdoors, put it in a windowsill or put it in pots or just grow it right inside the garden soil bag. Number three is strawberries. Strawberries with the water issues and also with the fact they've had a lot of disease in fruits this year, there's gonna be a shortage. Now this is another thing. Strawberries are like sweet potatoes, like we talk about all the time about having sustainable foods on farm. Strawberries are also perennials. They're gonna produce once a year, but if you deep bed them, they will come back each and every year. So if you have a little spot, you can plant some. If you, can, if you wanna plant in pots, you can plant strawberries in pots as well. Now here's the cool thing. If you have just two or three strawberry plants, they're going to make runners and those runners are gonna jump and they're gonna bed and they're gonna start producing more strawberry plants. So you can start making strawberry plants and start producing your own strawberries or the plants to sell. So it's a way to help other people. It's a way for you to stock up. Now, if you're not gonna try to grow them, that's okay. Start buying strawberries and learn how to preserve them. We have about a gallon or two every other day that we're picking here at our farm. So what we do is we'll put some in the freezer, we'll keep some fresh for us to eat, or learn to utilize in preserves or jams or jellies. So we're finding other ways to preserve the harvest. So if you can, go buy in bulk. Right now, you can usually find strawberries that are coming to market. They're in shortage, but if you start buying them early, you usually can get a bulk discount or you can buy them in a pallet or a flat. If you can do it like that at co-ops or garden stores, you're gonna start saving money and then you can take them, learn how to preserve them. When it becomes a real big shortage in the summer, you either have the plants that you've started planting or you have the extra strawberries that you bought for a little bit more economical and then you learn how to preserve them so that way you can enjoy the strawberries all summer long. Number four is mayonnaise. Now mayonnaise is something so easy to make and when you buy it in the store you're buying trash mayonnaise it has so much bad stuff in it here's how easy mayonnaise is i'm going to link a video of misty making mayonnaise at our home all you need is one cup of oil some salt and an egg that a yolk is intact that's how easy and that's all you need when it comes to mayonnaise and we just literally emulsify it using an emulsified blender and you've got mayonnaise it's better tasting it's more creamy and you can then flavor it how you want either with sriracha or salt or pepper so it's so easy to make with stuff you already have so learn to just make it instead of worrying about the shortage. Right now, mayonnaise has went up about 15%. And they're saying because of the sunflower, because of the pommel, and because of all these vegetables that are gonna be in shortage, that is what's gonna cause the issues with mayonnaise. Also, 
egg-based products. Eggs are in shortage. It's not part of this list, but we've talked about that before, about trying to grow chickens and making sure you have eggs off the farm or buying from a local farmer. But because eggs and oil are in shortage, you're gonna start seeing shortages with mayonnaise. We've talked about plastics and being shortage there too. So you see how the supply chain of things that are already in shortage are gonna cause more shortages for things that it's used to make. We've talked about this with grains. Well, grains are in shortage, so flowers are gonna be in shortage. Flowers are gonna be in shortage, so breads are gonna be in shortage. It's the same thing when it comes to mayo if we see the oil we see the eggs in shortage it's gonna have all those products that are made by those in shortage as well please learn how to make mayo it's so easy and you're gonna actually enjoy it more than any kind that you will ever buy number five as a prepper this is something that we have always talked about but it's any kind of canned fish things like tuna things like salmon things like even sardines so you need to be purchasing a lot of that now i know people like naysayers they'll say oh you don't need to buy that kind of stuff because it's got mercury in it if we eat it in moderation these kind of things are not bad for us also try to find wild caught non-gmo versions of canned fish canned fish is a great protein and it's a great way to buy protein to last a long time on the shelves and also it's pretty economical right now but it's going to be more in shortage because of the steel or the aluminum cans that they're put in also the fact of the fisheries and fishing all that's in shortage supply chain issues that affect overall production and also the fact of how it passes down to us at the grocery store canned fish is a big deal if you start seeing that shortage you don't realize how many people eat tuna sardines or salmon a lot it's part of their main diet again it's a way to save money and have a protein provided for you at a pretty good price now here's some things to think about if you have a place where you can go and fish maybe a public access lake or pond maybe a friend has something learn to go fish and learn how to clean your own fish learn how to put that fish up either through the freezer or even learn how to can it now i've never canned fish that's not something that i would probably want to do we have a lake that we pretty much fish out of but here's the cool thing say you don't want to do all that look at this right here all right this is an aquaponic system now this is a small version you can grow it but like ours we have an aquaponic system we're going to be showing to you in just a few days and weeks coming up with some of the things that we're going to be growing in the aquaponics but what you're going to be doing is you're going to be growing things like the strawberries things like the tomatoes things like the lettuce all the stuff we talked about in shortage you can grow without soil if you want to do aquaponics because aquaponics is letting these fish feed the shrubbery with their waste and then you have fish, you have protein sitting under there that you can harvest if you wanted to. So if you are constantly adding to your aquaponics, your fish are gonna grow and one day you will have to harvest them. Things like tilapia, things like perch, things like catfish, things that we already eat. So look at aquaponics, look at a way that you can grow indoors. This pot you can utilize indoors, putting by some kind of window or some kind of grow light. Not only are you growing the food that's in shortage, you're actually raising meat right underneath in this water that's feeding everything. It's a beautiful system, closed off, beautiful system that could help you mitigate the problems with food shortages and also the cost of food going up. So I hope this list helped. This is five things that are going to be in more shortage and you're gonna see this over and over because things like tomatoes, it's gonna to affect a lot of tomato products. Things like mayonnaise, mayonnaise is in a lot. Also the raw materials such as the eggs and oil are gonna cause more issues with mayonnaise. So learn to make your own. Look at ways that you can grow fish or learn to fish and skin your own and scale them down and fillet them and hey, you got some fish. It's a fun task, it's something good you could do for your family and enjoy. There's no reason you're not growing tomatoes and strawberries. You know, if we're talking corn, corn, you can't hardly grow corn in a smaller area. We've talked about it, but it does take a lot more room. But when you're talking strawberries and tomatoes, it doesn't take a lot of room. It can actually be done indoors. Lettuce, same way. We grow lettuce and tomatoes and strawberries pretty much all year long because we've learned to put them in pots. We've learned to put them indoors. We've learned to pull them out. We've learned to grow them in any facet and every facet because we want food, best quality food, and not be affected by the supply chain or the cost of goods or the fact that they may be in shortage. As we go through volatile and stressful times, always remember, no fear, no worry. It's trying to prepare and make sure we're ready for what's to come. So if we're gaining wisdom always and we're seeking wisdom, I promise you, you will not have your head in the sand or the rug will not be pulled out from under you and you will be ready for anything that comes. Guys, thank you so much again for watching. God bless. Happy homesteading, y'all.